Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It is Wednesday, the 11th of August, 2021. And we got a lot to talk about out there in the tropics. Fred, of course, tops the agenda for today. But after Fred, we're going to have quite a bit more activity to deal with. So let's get right to it, shall we? Fred is just the start. Yep, we saw this coming. The pattern becoming more favorable. And we see Fred sort of leading the way. I'm not too concerned with Fred, though, and I'll show you why. I mean, there's some concern. You don't ever write these things off, but it doesn't look like a really big problem, at least not yet. First of all, the very, very wide shot. A couple of systems here in the Pacific. Kevin and Linda, both of those staying well out to sea, if you will, away from Mexico, so that's good. And then you've got Fred over here, which eventually could end up somewhere in the eastern Gulf of Mexico with impacts to Florida as we zoom in on our interactive map here off the insider site. Again, here's Kevin, and the good news is moving away from land, not even real uh, a real swell threat. Does that make sense? No swells generated of any significance. There'll be a little bit of energy put into the waves. So some of the surfers up here along the west coast of the U.S. and the Baja might be a little bit of increased wave action, but nothing substantial. And Linda here forecast to become a hurricane over the next several days, and that might send some swell energy up towards Cabo San Lucas and elsewhere in the southern Gulf of California. Something to pay attention to, but at least so far, no threats to Mexico. All right, at least directly. Now looking at Fred, right now knocking on the door, almost literally, of the Dominican Republic. Pretty much making landfall as we speak. I'll show you that on satellite in just a moment. And it's forecast to head across the Greater Antilles Islands here, as you know, across the Florida Straits, eastern Gulf of Mexico, making landfall somewhere in the vicinity of Apalachicola or wherever, somewhere nearby, somewhere in this cone of uncertainty. How strong it will be, what its structure is like, and what impacts there will be, that remains to be seen because this is the five-day forecast. You know, that's 120 hours out, so about 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Let's just call it Monday morning, the 16th, is when it would be expected up there. And, you know, a path like this close to the west coast of Florida, depending on what the structure is like, certainly could be some impacts over here in the same areas that Elsa impacted recently, but this has a different trajectory. Uh, so we'll have to see. You know, the Big Bend, St. Mark's, and vicinity could have some impacts from this, uh, even if it's, quote, just a tropical storm. So we'll wait and see how this pans out, especially after it interacts down here with these islands. And you can see here, you know, the island of Hispaniola has some mountains in it, mainly over here on the west side where Haiti is. Um, certainly some rugged terrain down the spine over here. And it's that low-level circulation that goes across, kind of gets the, the guts ripped out of it. Don't want to be too graphic here, but it's literally like the bottom part of the torso getting torn off. And it, that really is disruptive. Some of those mountains down there reaching several thousand feet. And when they poke up like that and that low-level circulation comes through, it creates a lot of distortion and convergence uh, that can sharpen it on one side, weaken it on the other. And just it's, it's, Here's a good way to think of it. It's like a whole bunch of elephants or cars or whatever going in one direction, and the front end of them crashes. And you see all these tumbling cars or a herd of elephants. Kind of a neat visual, isn't it? Um, and that's what this does, and it sort of just kind of falls in on itself, and that low-level circulation gets disrupted, and unless it can really get its act together over the southwest Atlantic and the Florida Straits, there may not be much left to worry about. But we don't know that for sure, so we don't write this off completely. But the trip over the Dominican Republic and Haiti is commencing. It's not going to be like some of these other storms. I think last year, Isaias went around or something like this. It was able to dance around. Elsa, I don't remember the exact track, but Elsa was generally able to avoid the Dominican Republic kind of scooting into the south here, I think it was, and then it finally cut up, if memory serves. But this one, yep, it's going right over the island of Hispaniola, and that will certainly have some negative impacts on Fred's structure. All right, the wide picture here of what we have going on. We already talked about Kevin and Linda, so we'll leave it at that. There's Fred down there in the Caribbean, 
really not much to it overall. It's very unimpressive. That being said, it is still bringing some heavy rain, and that can cause mudslides and flash flooding. But overall, it is not that impressive. And also, with it being weak, it certainly has the potential to strengthen more from where it is once it gets out over the water and comes up here, whatever the track ends up being. And let me explain what I mean by that. So if this was coming in as a solid, well-developed hurricane with a defined core, then all of this disruption that would happen, it would take a while, several days probably, for it to reorganize that core. Let's just pretend that it was coming in at 130 mile per hour low end category four with a well-defined eye. That would get disrupted quite a bit and it would take a lot for that to come back to reach that maximum potential that it had already reached, let's say, as it got there. Well, with the way Fred is now, it's like way down here, even though the ceiling might be up here, it still can get there, all things being equal, the big inhibitor right now is land. So there is room for this to strengthen, is the bottom line, and so the disruption of the circulation is not as impactful, because it's not that strong to begin with. And there is certainly room and time over water, it just depends on which way this ends up. If it just keeps tracking over land, maybe it gets over Cuba, and stays over Cuba for a while, then this is not going to have as much of an opportunity at all to be much of a wind or storm surge threat, but the rain will certainly be there, and you know how I emphasize that impact. Rain is a hazard, all right? So let's zoom in on this, and you can see what I'm talking about a little closer, a lot closer. Uh, really nice GIF animation here from the Weather Nerd site. Low-level circulation, easy to spot right in here. Very vigorous, no doubt about it. Limited convection, limited banding overall, just not that well organized, but it is bringing some very heavy rain and some squally weather. That will lead to mudslides down here, no doubt about it, that hill country down there. And you can even see hill country, it's more like mountains. In fact, let me zoom in here. You really get an idea just looking at this visible satellite animation. There's the mountains right there. And so this flow coming around this way, you get what's called orographic lift where the air comes up and over those mountains, trying to draw it in sort of a 3D fashion here. So this will create a lot of convergence here. So as the center moves in and over, I think this little mountain range in here could be the focusing mechanism for some tremendously heavy rain. And any villages and little towns along the streams, creeks and rivers down there, gullies, guts, whatever you call them, that could really be the source of some significant flash flooding. And then you've got the mountains that are over here in Haiti. And so any of that flow that comes around, again, you lift that air parcel, multiple air parcels down here, you lift it and you squeeze out the available moisture in much more dramatic fashion than you would if those mountains weren't there. And that strong rising motion leads to very, very heavy rainfall. Looking at our next system, in fact, let me just get to this in a moment. Let's look at the vorticity signature. There's Fred down there covered by the tropical storm symbol. Um, we saw the vorticity of it, I mean, pretty much intact there on the visible satellite animation. So let's focus on this now. This is Invest Area 95L, and this one has pretty good model support. Look at that round structure to it. Overall, the vorticity is getting there. The structure's there. It's kind of at the low end. Not a lot of energy with it yet. Not a lot of spin. Not a lot of wind. But it is at the formative stages, and generally speaking, it should be headed off into the direction of the Lesser Antilles in a general sense. Exactly where it ends up obviously remains to be seen. But we have Fred out here, 95L, and then there's more over Africa, which I'll show you in just a moment. So here's a close-up satellite of 95L. It's getting there. It's got a pretty sharp feeder band coming in here. Convection on the southern end of it. Overall, the environment out here is a mix of some dry air in the mid-levels, but overall a fairly favorable light shear environment over warm water, water that's a little bit warmer than the long-term average. And so you would expect that most of the global models are suggesting that this will continue to develop as it moves on to the west and west-northwest with time. And um, in fact, Eric Webb was just talking about this earlier today, says as if Fred and 95L weren't enough, and this goes back to the title there that Fred is just the start. 
We have another easterly wave over Central Africa starting to make some noise on the models, especially the ensemble prediction system from the Euro. So here are these different, in, different infographics that Eric put together. Uh, so this is about six days out. So we know what we're looking at. This is out into the future, 144 hours. And these are all the different ensemble clusters of the potential locations of FRED. In six days, this is where 95L could be, much more clustered and stronger members of the model in there as well. And you might be saying, okay, Mark, what am I looking at again? This is the ensemble prediction. In other words, in this case with the Euro, there's 51 ensemble members. And this is the amount of those members that are showing something at six days out, each individual run in a snapshot. So there's no tracks. This is like where they would be on day six going out into time. And as you can see with Fred, I think luckily here, one way to look at it, not a lot of, of course it's inland, but not a lot of these members are very strong. And a part of that is, of course, because it's inland. And yet a lot of these down here, I know they're very dense. These are stronger. You know, you have some sub 1000 and uh, millibars. There's a 974 sneaking in right there. So some of these ensemble members are fairly stout concerning 95L. And then a few of the members here, good about, a good amount of them, indicating another strong African easterly wave coming out. And I love Twitter when it does this. It's like a little slideshow. You can even see that here indicated in the vorticity field, uh, the easterly wave, these uh, vorticity areas showing up with these mesoscale convective vortices, a vortex, vortices for plural, of vortex. And this is the energy that we talk about, the seedling. That's what it looks like modeled over interior Africa several days from reaching the west coast. This is the west coast of Africa right here. There's Dakar and down towards Senegal, the Gulf of Guinea down here. And these will be moving along out into a favorable Atlantic basin. And we can see that on satellite here. These are the areas that Eric is referencing through here. Generally speaking, plenty of energy over Africa headed out into the Atlantic. And you know what? I want to just bring up the National Hurricane Center homepage real quick. Show you out here should be the yep updated Tropical Weather Outlook. This is 95L, now up to 50% development chances. So that's telling, and you can see the direction that this is headed. Let's just look at this as a singular image. Generally, towards the west-northwest with time, towards the islands here. So you get a, you're going to, I mean, come on. You don't need me to tell you, but just reminding you, you need to pay attention to this one. Um, and as, in terms of where this ends up, I will say this as reading through some of weather Twitter as they call it, I call it, a lot of where this ends up, and this makes a lot of sense, is going to be determined by how deep in the atmosphere 95L gets. How much can it kind of fill up and fill out into the atmosphere? A shallower 95L in the atmosphere, that is to say not much thunderstorm activity with it, will tend to ride more west in the lower level westerly flow coming or easterly flow going towards the west sorry every once in a while i get that backwards easterly flow when we talk about wind and you say it's easterly wind that's the direction it's coming from so the easterly flow would carry this more westward than if it were larger and kind of filling out into the atmosphere where it would feel the upper level steering which is slightly more to the north of west you know so instead of 270 which is due west yeah, maybe about 280, 285 on a compass direction, a bearing. And that's what is indicated there by the orange and now outlined or at least highlighted with a yellow area by yours truly. That's where this could end up. So, yeah, it's uh, not even quite mid-August yet. A lot to talk about, a lot to keep track of. Nothing too concerning just yet. And again, with Fred, just to kind of recap, I'm not overly concerned about major impacts for Florida just yet. But again, I want to emphasize that's not to say it can't pull a surprise on us. You just never know until these things are gone and inland and weakening. Uh, there is a window of opportunity there depending on where this ends up and how intact that fragile low-level center is. So the best course of action over the next few days, keep an eye on it. Again, 
Some of this stuff is obvious, but we got a lot going on in the world, and I try to break it down for you, at least make sense of it for you. Uh, I'm not overly concerned just yet. No plans to go to Florida. That's a big clue right there. If I'm not headed down there, then it's probably not going to be too big of an issue outside of that heavy rainfall, which was always going to be present even in these incipient tropical waves. And that can pose enough problems on the highways and byways down there in heavily populated Florida. Heavy rain alone can be an impact. So we'll watch everything, keep you abreast of what's going on. I do have a podcast every morning. It's called Hurricane Season, the podcast. Those words, search for that, Hurricane Season, the podcast, on Apple and Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts, Google Podcasts. Also, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and you're watching on YouTube. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends, family, colleagues, message boards, whatever. It's free to do. We're all supported every bit of this by Patreon, the app and website that allows people to support projects just like this, patreon.com slash hurricane track. As always, thanks for tuning in from your device. I appreciate it. Good to have you with me. I'm Mark Suddeth, hurricanetrack.com. We'll talk about it some more tomorrow.